Pirate. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a vintage clock that I've found. You can do this with any reference um, that you can find on Google. Of course, if it's something that you're going to use professionally, you have to give credit where credit is due. In my case, I'm just using this for purposes of, um, of a tutorial, so I'm not going to be selling this. I'm just going to um, show you guys how to get from start to finish. Um, most of my tutorials so far have been very small. This one is going to be a bit more intricate. It has more parts to it, and we're going to do it from beginning to end. Um, of course, this is assuming you know the basics of Maya. I'm working with Maya 2023.1. 20, um, so let's begin. So the first thing I want to do is, um, I already have my my scene set up. I'm going to press the space bar. I'm going to come to my front view because this is the angle that my reference is in. I'm going to view, in, uh, slide down to image plane, import image. I'm going to go to my downloads. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And I'm going to pick vintage clock. We're going to do this whole thing from start to finish. Before I begin, I want to go to my preferences, settings, and make sure that I have selected inch. I always like to do this in case you guys want to 3D print something or, um, or do anything else where um, something is true to size. Um, in this case, this clock, I'm going to make it about... So each square, if I didn't tell you in the last tutorial, is an inch so one two three four five inches we can make this a bit bigger so let's go a bit bigger because this is actually supposed to go on a on a wall i'm going to press e to rotate it and make sure that that line is straight here as much as i can i'm going to bring this up make sure that the circle is as close to the middle as possible so this should be what i'm trying to get at there um, I'm going to push it back into space and I'm going to hide the grid here. And right now what I am going to do is I'm going to, like I said in my last video, I always make sure that my references don't get damaged. But before I do that, guys, I want to show you guys something special that you can do in Maya. You see how if we look here, these details are, are blank. You can try to fix that by going into the attribute editor while the reference is selected and use the color offset it might help it might not help in this case it looks okay we got a little bit more visibility if you don't see what i'm talking about um let me show you what i mean so i wanted to get a little bit more detail of what's going on here this is what we had and this is what maya allows you to see this is good guys we want this so now after we're done with this I'm gonna show you how to extract this background in Photoshop and this that's gonna be in another tutorial and so that we can use it as a reference I mean as a texture in um, in um, substance painter and make sure that we have exactly what we get here so let's begin so this is here i'm gonna go up to channel box layer editor and what i'm gonna do is as i always do layer create layer from selected and click twice click off of it and now it's no longer editable it is just a reference now i'm gonna begin with the outside to get rid of the easy stuff first so this is gonna be wall mounted the first thing we want to do is i would make this as one piece that cross so let's do that. Let's take a, um, let's do it with this. Okay, I'm gonna do it differently this time. Normally I would use a plane and do, but let's do it different. Let's do it already in uh, in 3D instead of a flat plane. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press W, you're gonna bring this here. You're gonna press shading, shading, X-ray and shading wireframe on shaded and i'm going to show you why i want this so i'm going to space bar into here i'm going to um try to match this up as much as i can now you see it's crooked so you're gonna this is a good example of when you should uh, use 
logic. We know that our line is straight. We know that this is bent. So we don't have to worry about what we're doing. We just have to make sure that we logically uh, you know, make sure that it's as, as, as real as possible without damaging it. You know, so let's go here. I'm going to make it a bit thicker than what it is because um, that's just the way I like to do things. I like to be more um, more realistic than sometimes the, the design does. So let's say it wants to come out here and here. We add those edge loops. Now, while still looking at this, we're going to come to here and we're going to right click face Q and then we're going to press W. Um, why am I not seeing that there? Huh? That's awkward. Oh, here we go. So this is what I was looking for. So shift, click and drag. I'm going to push that all the way across to where it ends. Again, guys, I know that it's a bit off from the reference, but you know that your design is straight. So don't worry about the reference. That's just why it's called a reference. However, what we are going to do is we're going to keep this like this a bit wider. You know what? Let's make it a bit thinner. Something like so. I'm happy with that. Now, we're going to click the torus. You can see it, you know, press E, hold down J and rotate it to its flat like this from the top view because we're going to bring it over. And then I'm going to show you how this works. So you're going to put it where you want it. And instead of guessing and shrinking, we have a lot of good uh, stuff that we can do here in, in Maya. So what I am going to do is I am going to bring it to the diameter that I do want it. However, let me make sure that it's in the right spot. But, and instead of going crazy and you know whatever what we can do is we can go to the modeling toolkit we haven't used this in my last videos actually let's go to the actually add ed editor we're gonna go to poly Taurus one now we have a few goodies in here that we can mess with we can go with the radius and it's gonna make it thinner let's try that and when we press R watch what happens so we can keep doing this, we can keep pushing the radius to make it a bit thinner. Press R and shrink it, but you have to be careful. See, that's perfect for me. I am very happy with that. So I'm gonna press W, I'm gonna move it over, accommodate it. Now here's where you're gonna have to be very smart about things. As you can see, it's pushing into here, which is no problem. However, here it's pushing out of it. We don't want that. So we're gonna press vertex on the square and we're gonna push this out, guys. I know that it's not looking like the reference. I mean, you know, it's a bit off, but we're trying to make sure that it's realistic. So this is what we want. If we look here, this is what we want, right? So I'm gonna press object mode. And then so here, I'm gonna to try to make this a bit thinner. Here I'm gonna to go to X-ray mode so I can see what I what I really want. So if I press R, I'm gonna push it just a bit. I think that's more realistic than the, the width that I had. I'm gonna keep it there. So right now, I'm gonna press Shift Command S and I'm gonna save it my way. Some people create uh, a, a project folder and I try not to go too crazy guys so I'm gonna go to my desktop I'm gonna click here where it says make a new folder I'm gonna call this folder vintage clock press um, com command A or control A command copy press enter open this click here and press command V and I'm gonna put V1 because I might have other versions that I would like to do and you know whatever save as in the la in the other videos I didn't save as much but here since we're doing a full project I'm going to show you exactly how um how I would do this now 
let's go to the next part. You know, before we, we go on, let's make this a bit smaller. Let's push it, uh, let's push it a bit more in. And let's add more edges to it because, um, let's see, because we want that to be perfectly round. We don't want it uh, jagged. 50 is good, but if you ever feel that you need more than 50, you can manually type in 60. And then you can drag even more of what you had. So let's say 6, 70 is good for me. Okay, let's let's leave it at 70. 71. Let's leave it there. Okay, I'm happy with that. So what I want is this. You see how clean it looks? You don't see no jagged edges because in real life, those things are welded and well-made and they don't look jagged. We don't want that here either. Now, what we're going to do is, is this part next, right? There's a few ways to approach this, okay? So what we can do is, and I'm going to show you, okay, let's do, it. let's do it the cool way. This is another thing that I always compare to 3ds Max. You're not going to get this cool tool here. Let's just say I want to make this exactly as it is, right? And this. Well, with Maya, you can create uh, with, the, with the curve tool, with the CV curve tool. There's a lot of varieties, but I use this one a lot. And I'm just going to basically um, draw what I'm seeing here, right? So let's just say I go click once. And please, guys, use as many clicks as you need to get the right curvature. Because sometimes if you do not do this the right way, you're going to get um, a weird shape. And we do not want that. We're trying to get this. As close as we can. Hold on a minute. I have something in my way here. And we're going to keep clicking. When you do something like this, try to stay in the middle of the design as much as possible. So that when we get to um, extruding, um, and once we're done, we're going to press enter. We're going to do another one here. And watch what I'm watch why I love Maya, guys. If you're not in love with this after seeing what I'm about to do and still think 3ds Max is the best, we got problems. So now these I want these to be the same exact width um when I round them out. What are we gonna do? We're gonna um let me see if I modify with create. Oh, here we go. So we're going to create a sweep mesh. It doesn't look like much now, guys. But let's scale the profile down to where we think we want it. We're going to push this up. Not too much. I, I, I just want something that's good enough. I'm going to press optimize. So what optimize does is going to give you the same result with less uh, topology. So look at what we have, guys. This is something that you will not find in 3ds Max. I'm doing both at the same time, guys, at the same time. If you want to see how cool that looks, let's go over here. Check this out. Now, if you the, the, the best part of this is you see that this one's touching, but this one's not. At the end here, watch this. So right now, on the fly, I can click Vertex, I mean Edit Point, and watch this. If I want just that to move up, watch how the whole thing moves with it. You'll see that right here. And if it's a little off, you can just bring this up a little more and give it a bit of a curvature. Remember, guys, we're trying to replicate this, but... Sometimes, um, sometimes you have to um, improvise. This is the point of this whole um, this whole uh, video. So I'm going to edit the point again. I'm going to select this point and I'm going to push it to that one. And again, if you want to see, you know, 
if you want to make sure that this works you can just manually edit it and still get clean curves where's the next one right there still get clean curves so it still looks good it's still touching here which is what i wanted so it looks like it's actually connected now here we're gonna have to work a little more so now i'm gonna select all of these and i'm gonna push them all to touch right there we're gonna have to work a little more on this so we're gonna have to look at here which it's looking fine but I'm going to push a little more to make sure, no, you see right there is fine. And let's see where we got the other wiggle going on. Okay, so I'm happy with this, guys, because even if I push this a little more to touch, which it should, right, uh, darn it. So I'm looking at this while I'm pushing. If I press object mode, guys, that is done. Look how beautiful that is. Now, if you're done editing the curve and you don't want it, you're going to have to clean this up. We don't need no more curves. So we're going to select everything. Edit. Delete all by type history. Edit. Delete all by type non-deformer. Modify freeze and modify center the pivot. Now when you delete, click delete, click delete. You keep a nice clean geometry. Freak. Oh, this is another thing. You see, I didn't cap this. That's my mistake. So let's go back. And let's make sure that we go back and... Let me see. Okay. So now what we can do still is, even with the sweep, sweep mesh creator, we can cap it. Um, and I also realized that it looks cute, but it, it's we, this is not what we want. So we're going to cap everything, and by capping one, it caps the other. On top of that, we want more sides, guys, because it's perfectly round. So let's give it 20 sides. I think that's good enough. And so now, if we press um, wireframe on shaded, we want to have... Um, How would I approach this? So, okay, never mind. I'll show you guys how to deal with this in a bit. So let me finish this, and then I'll show you what I'm trying, what I'm talking about. So we have that. Now let's do the whole process that I that I said earlier. I did delete by type history. Delete by type non-deformer. Modify freeze. Modify center. Select those curves. Delete them, Command S or Control S to make sure you don't lose. Now, guys, if I was to um, to press number three on this, look what happens. That's gonna happen if you smash it out because the faces have no supporting uh, information inside. So we can take care of this two ways. What we can do is we can select face click shift click command r I'm, I'm sorry command e we're gonna make the pac-man here like i always say in my videos it's called the pac-man i'm gonna push this in i'm gonna press delete now what i am gonna do is i'm gonna se select all these edges and let me see how I would um, clap edges to center if I am not mistaken. Okay, this is what we want. Why? Now, let me do the bottom and then I'll explain to you what I'm trying to do. So we're going to take all of these, shift, right click, collapse to center. The reason we're doing this is because now... If I select all those edges and I shift right click and bevel that edge and give it a segment once I uh, make that number two there. If I press right click object mode and now I press three, 
that's what we want instead of that you see the difference we, instead of that we're getting a nice clean uh closed area and it's good geometry so we're gonna press one here we're gonna do the same thing we did over there so we're gonna face click come all the way down shift click command e offset it and then now press delete now we can take this edge first double click it collapse to center merge edges to center let's go to the top if you ever have an issue and you want to focus on something select it and press f and you're going to get something real close like this you see so now we're going to go edge now if you're confused and you're in vertex you can select all those vertices and you can still shift right click and merge the vertices to the center same thing as the edges it's still the same the last step we have now is double click the edge we're gonna shift double click this edge here we're gonna bevel that edge we're gonna make it a smaller fraction because it's not that thick. We're gonna make this one too also, and we're gonna bring it down. Shift right click, object mode. And, I mean right click object mode, and now watch what happens. If I press three on these, perfect. If I take away the wireframe unshaded, this is what we're looking for. If I press one, it's still clean geometry. And when you export UV and export this, it's still going to be very clean. So let's do the cleanup. Edit, delete by type history. Edit, delete by type non-deformer. Modify freeze. Modify center. Click out and command S. Now, with this one, we're going to need... And uh, we're going to need supporting edges. Why? If I press number three, that is not pretty. So how do we do? What we're going to do is we're going to select this. And we're going to mesh tool, insert edge loop, double click, reset it. Make sure it's always at reset when you're going to do things manually. And we're going to add our edge loops. So we want one here. When you do these edge loops, try to make perfect squares. And here, here, you see, as perfect squared as possible. Because um, it helps your geometry a lot. So we want a square here. A square. What I mean a square is that shape right in there. Same thing here. Same thing here, uh, here, if it lets me. Now we're going to come in here, and we also want one here. A nice square there. Why? If I press 3, look at the difference. See how clean that is? So we're almost done. We want a nice square here at the end. Right there. We already did all of these. And we want one more here. So let me bring this up, zoom in, and make sure I have a nice little square there. Let me make sure I have one at the top because then it would suck if I didn't do it. So I did do it. And now look at the difference of what you, if I press three in object mode. You see, this is what we're looking for, guys. Q. Ah, you see this? I missed one. So let's, let's press number one. No, I didn't miss it. So why is it giving me that weird? Huh. Let me see. That's correct. That's the right way. So I'm happy with that. Command one. By the way, I forgot to say, if you press, if you select something and press command one, it'll focus on that. And if you press command one, it'll bring it all back. Command one is to isolate whatever you have selected. So let's press Command S. We're happy with this now. Now we're going to jump on this. 
how do we proceed with this? So it's very simple. Um, we're gonna start with a, a sphere and then transform that, that sphere into one piece. So let's do that, guys. Number one, we got a sphere. We're gonna press W. We're gonna bring it up. And we're gonna press R to shrink it, right? And well, you're gonna try to be as precise as possible. So what we are gonna do is you're gonna press R and then press it this way and press it up. Let's move it over a bit. Now, this is where you know where your cutoff point is. So we're gonna press face. We're going to delete, um, how, how would I do this? Okay, let's delete those faces. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these edges. We're going to press R to shrink it a bit. Double click, shrink that a bit so it can and this last one, we're gonna shrink it a bit. Now with double clicking this, we're gonna press W, shift click, bring it down. Shift click, bring it down one more time. But now we're gonna press R and we're gonna push it out to match that. We're gonna uh, press W, shift click and drag. Shift click and R. Now here we're gonna have to take a guess. W, shift, click, and drag. So, nope. Let's make it a bit smaller. Shift, click, and drag. Nope. So, let's look at what's going on here. Okay, so now we have to make it a bit smaller. Let's shrink it a bit. W, shift and drag it down. Darn it. Okay, we have to push this a little, exaggerate it, and then bring it down. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's very close. Now, there's an issue here. I don't know what's going on here. But let's improvise. Let's press. W, shift and click it to here. And again, guys, this might be what's happening, but I'm not really sure, so I'm just going to assume that this is what's happening. W, shift, click, and drag it all the way down. And I'm going to stop here, right? Now, I don't know if this is screwed on to this or if this is one piece. So let's analyze what we want to do here. Let's just make believe this is one big piece. So let's press R. I'm going to push this all the way out to it reaches. I mean, I'm sorry. Shift and R, and I'm going to stretch it out to what I think is happening. Shift, click, and drag this. I'm going to press R, and I'm going to shrink this. to about there. So what I am gonna do now is mesh to insert edge loop. I am going to take this and set an edge loop here and I'm going to press R. I'm gonna insert another one here. I'm going to press R. I'm gonna keep repeating this process to I get more or less what I am trying to get. which is the shape of the bowl. So right now it's not perfect guys, but I'll perfect it in a bit. And I'm gonna add one more here and I'm gonna press R. I'm gonna add one more here. I'm gonna press R to make that a little bit more rounder. And I'm gonna press here and I'm gonna try to centralize this and press R. So now we have something that's very 
close to what that is. I might need one more here for what I'm seeing. Now, there's another thing we can do. If we're happy with what we have and it's not working a certain way, let's say this edge, uh, I'm going to double click this edge, uh, this one, I'm sorry, because it sees how close it is. Shift right click, and if you press slide edge and you, um, it tells you drag with middle mouse button, it slides the edge. So now you can slide this edge and get more equal separation. Here I'm going to press R because I can see that it's not rounded. But right now I'm happy with this. I'm truly happy with that, guys. Now here, we're going to have to round this out because it's supposed to be round. So from the top view, if you look at it, you'll know if it's round or not by doing this. I think that's fine. I'm very happy with that. Object mode, I'm going to Command S. And now we have the basic frame. And so now I am going to stop this tutorial here um, as part one. We will do the clock and the rest of the texturing and UV in the second video. Um, but keep an eye out for the next process. So far, I showed you how to get the base of this. If you want to go ahead on your own, you can. But if you want to finish seeing the rest, um, be on the lookout for part, for part two. Thank you so much, guys, for looking at my video. I hope this helped you out with any doubts that you've had um, on getting your feet wet with Maya or transferring from 3DS to Maya and don't know what you're doing. I wish you guys a great day, and thank you for watching my vid once again, guys.